Hey guys, Special Aussie here and welcome to another Ajax Dutch Players Only Series episode for Football Manager 2015. This is the mid-season review. Um, first of all, I just want to say that um, I haven't put up a video for two weeks, so I do apologise for that. Um, you know, real life stuff's got in the way once again. Working up until Christmas and then, you know, having, you know, family and stuff to take care of on Christmas is something that was, you know bound to happen I suppose, but um, hopefully the videos will be a little bit more con you know, constant, although I'm not 100% confident about that because I obviously have work again and then I have um, New Year's off which I'm obviously going to be doing something on that day as well, so yeah, um, we'll get into the episode now. Um, I don't think I made any transfers, um, if I go into the actual transfer list. Um, yeah, no transfers were brought in, and no one was let go of during January, so pretty boring on that front, but we'll get into the uh, fixtures straight away here. I really don't want to waste any time. Of course, the last episode was Bayern Munich, the 2-0 loss at home. We followed that up with a 1-0 away victory back in the league against ADO, or Den Haag, however you want to say it. Gustagnos got the only goal there in the 63rd minute and gave us all three points. We then drew 2 all with uh, FC20, or Twente, um, so it's a pretty disappointing draw, and um, I think at this stage we were number 1 and 2 in the league, so it was a pretty big game. Kishna and Zivkovic got our goals, and uh, Al Sawali and J Jesus Corona got the goals for Twente. Next game was a really disappointing Champions League group stage game, a 5-0 loss to Zenit St. Petersburg. Um, as you can see, their team in the Champions League is probably one of the best, I have to say. I went through their team and they've got players like Hulk, Krishito, um, I mean Kurzakov's a fairly decent Russian player, um, but yeah, their team is just stacked with really good players, um, but I mean a 5-0 loss is pretty poor, um, you know, any day of the week. We then bounce back with a draw away from home, nil or drug match against Zwolle back in the um, Eredivisie. Not the ideal result coming off that, but we bounced back after that and beat ONS, a non-league team, 9-1 away from home in the Dutch Cup third round. Um, pretty much to be expected. I did play a you know, half-decent team in this game. As you can see, Ghazi got a brace. Mirani, who's a youth centre-back, got a goal. We've got Becker, Zivkovic, Duarte, Klaassen, Vinovic, and Kastagnos. And uh, my centre-back partnership was Mirani and uh, Bazua, so both very young players, I think they're both 18 years old, and uh, Bazua is actually a defensive midfielder that I am training as a centre-back, so yeah, pretty interesting, been playing in the cup games. We then somehow managed to beat Zenit, 4-1 um, at home, um, kind of a reverse fixture, um, and as you can see, Veltman, uh, Zivkovic, Brace, and Denzel, so both my centre-backs getting on the score sheet. Um, and then Kozakov got on the score sheet for Zenit once again. Um, but yeah, we beat them. So that was really weird. The next game was a 7-2 victory at home to Vitesse. Um, seven goals is pretty outstanding to score in the league. I think this was the new highest um, goals game in the actual league. So that was pretty good. Denzel, Becker, Kishner, a hat-trick for Zivkovic. Um, and El Ghazi on the score sheet for us there. The next game was against Utrecht, and as you can see, we finally lost in the league. Um, Utrecht beat us 1-0, Bajek getting their only goal, and as you can see, they only had two shots on target. We had 25 shots and f only five on target, could not find the back of the net, and uh, yeah, we had 61% possession as well, so I was really disappointed to lose that game. Um, we then followed that up with another loss, this time coming um, at home to Apoel um, in a must-win game in the Champions League. As you can see, we just got, we didn't really get played off the park, but they had two shots on target for two goals. Uh, we had 16 shots, six on target, no goals, and once again, 63% possession for us. And uh, John Arisa got man of the match, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Obviously, former Liverpool and Fulham player. We did bounce back against Go Ahead Eagles, I think they're called. Yeah, Go Ahead Eagles. 2-1 um, away from home, back in the area of VC. Uh, Kostagnos with a brace there getting us all three points, and uh, pushing us back into a positive position. We then followed up with another 2-0 victory at home to Camber. Um, Kostagnos and a Dijkstra own goal. 
We then could only manage a 1-0 draw against Excelsa at home as well, which is pretty disappointing. As you can see, we scored in the first minute. They scored in the 91st minute. They had two shots and two shots on target. And once again, we had 22 shots with nine on target. You can only manage the one goal. And we had 61% possession again. So we are, you know, absolutely dominating the teams in this league. But for some reason, we are, you know, either losing or drawing very, you know, poor games that um, our opponents have played against us. We then played Bayern Munich once again away from home at the Allianz Arena. And as you can see, Shakiri got a hat-trick against us, and they beat us 3-0. To be fair, we only had two shots on target, so we were never going to win that game. We then followed that up with a 4-0 home victory against Dortrecht um, in the Eredivisie. Goals coming from Proper, Juarte with a brace, and a Kulwick own goal, giving us all three points there. We followed that up with a Dutch Cup fourth-round victory against De Graafschap. Away from home as well. Pretty impressive. Juarte, Zivkovic, Kishner, and Becker on the score sheet. With Becker, the man of the match there. Impressive stuff. Feyenoord were our next opponent. We beat them 2-0 at home. Very impressive victory. Kishner and Proper on the score sheet once again. And that was a big game against a fairly strong team. Even though Feyenoord aren't doing that well so far this season. We then played a friendly against Augsburg. And uh, Kishner and Zivkovic got on the score sheet for us there. We then destroyed uh, Willem II, and as you can see, Zivkovic got a hat-trick for himself, Brenda Horst scored an own goal, Proper and Becker also on the score sheet once again, very impressive stuff. Followed up with another 4-0 victory coming at home, this time against uh, Nackbretter. Um, the goals coming from Denzel, Zivkovic, Duarte and Vinovic, and again we absolutely outplayed them again. Two clean sheets, make that three clean sheets in a row with the Dutch Cup quarterfinal against ADO or Den Haag. And as you can see, Kostagnos, Denzel and El Ghazi on the score sheet for us there. So three clean sheets in a row, pretty impressive. Pretty much unheard of to be to be fair. So yeah, I was quite happy with that to get three in a row. And um, obviously we haven't lost in about seven games. We've actually won seven straight. So very happy with that. Obviously there is a friendly game in there as well. So six straight in the league. Or five straight in the league, sorry, and one Dutch Cup game. So, happy with that so far. And if we jump into the table, I'm sure you all probably saw it before, we are actually coming first. We are on 47 points, and uh, PSV are in second on 40 points, but we do have a game in hand, so we could potentially go 10 points ahead of them. Although Twente do also have a game in hand, and they are on 39. So, if we win our game and Twente win their game, we'll be 8 points ahead of them. And they will be in third, uh, second, sorry, and PSV will be in third. So there we go. As you can see, Dortrecht are coming last. Um, nothing else really there that, you know, is, isn't to be expected, I suppose. Um, the only thing I can really say is Vitesse is quite low. Despite having, you know, some Chelsea loan players, you would expect them to be a little bit higher, maybe. Uh, Camber, uh, uh, you know, the surprise packets, I guess. Um, fairly decent this season so far. And uh, Feyenoord, as I said, not setting the world alight down there in 5th either. So, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much going to wrap this episode up, guys. Nice, quick. And, um, yeah, we are in the Dutch semi uh, Dutch Cup semi-final. And uh, we we're actually playing the second division side, Fortuna Sittard. And uh, they actually knocked out Twente in the last round. And I think it was a penalty shootout. So, really hoping we can get to the final of the cup and actually win it. I think that would be quite amazing. Um, anyway, we are also out of the Champions League, and we finished last in the group, so we don't even go into the Europa League either, which is a little bit disappointing, but I guess that means I can focus on the league and the cup, so I guess it's positive in a way. First season, I'm not too fussed about the Champions League. I really want to try and assert, you know, domestic dominance, I suppose. Anyway, that's going to wrap this episode up, guys. If you could drop a like, that would be amazing, and uh, yeah, hopefully I can get a few more episodes out Quick smart for you guys. I would love to, you know, pump these out as you know often as possible, but it is hard sometimes to get these episodes out. Um, and yeah, uh, next episode will be an Everton series episode, so make sure you tune in for that. Um, I will also have a tactics video out soon, hopefully, because um, I know a few people have asked for it. Quite, quite a little, yeah, it was quite a long time ago actually. 
Um, but yeah, I haven't forgotten about it, so I will definitely put that up, the even flow tactic that I use in both of my series, um, in the Everton one and on this one. So yeah, uh, that's it guys, goodbye.